Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for figure shopping video. I'm with Ryan in Hong Kong. We're going to look at a couple of local figure shops. Ryan, first of all, tell us where we're going right off the bat. What can we expect to see at this first shop? Uh, first place we're heading to is called Inns Point and that is where you'll find your Hot Toys, Legos, 6 inch figures like Figure Arts or Marvel Legends and a whole bunch of other random stuff as well. Random stuff? That's exactly what I want to see. So, you heard the man? Let's go! Oh, I hope you all are ready because we have so many stores to look at and this is just our first stop. It is kind of fitting that this is our first stop though because they don't have a ton of 1-6 scale stuff here. They do have some, but for the most part, it's fresh in box hot toys. Less so third party and outfit sets and head sculpts and stuff like that. That's coming up later on. If you do want to find your Hasbro, Black Series and Marvel Legends, and also your Transformers, Masterpiece, third party and otherwise, plus SH Figure Arts and Mafex, this is the place you come to. If something releases in Japan, say for instance it's an SH Figure Arts figure and you want it, and you are in Hong Kong, chances are just after it's been released, you'll find it here like the next day or the day after. This is a great place for that. They do have a lot of Lego and they do have a lot of bear bricks. I had no idea how popular bear bricks were, but they're a thing in Hong Kong. Pretty much every store that we went to had bear bricks, including some of the official Hot Toys stores. Speaking of Hot Toys, as you can see, they're everywhere. There are a ton of Hot Toys here, including some older stuff like that Stormtrooper 2-pack. I had my eye on it, but there were so many other things to buy, so I never ended up picking it up. I actually did come back the next day, and it was sold, so this stuff is moving pretty quickly. Lego, like I said, there is a ton of it. Each store kind of has its speciality. So if you're looking for Transformers, you'll be walking along these corridors and chances are you'll spot a Transformers store. You'll go in and that's exactly what you'll find in that store. Then if you're looking for Lego, you can go to a Lego specializing store. Or Hot Toys, for instance. Yeah, you can find them too. And don't forget, these prices... They're not USD, they're in HKD, Hong Kong dollars. You might be thinking, yeah, no shit, Justin, you're in Hong Kong, of course they're in Hong Kong dollars, but for some reason, people get really confused with different currencies. I guess it's just not a thing that people think about in their home country, but if you see a crazy price on something, just remember, it's Hong Kong dollars. Convert it, and that should give you a rough idea of how expensive or how cheap stuff is over here. Now, when you are walking through this place, especially on the weekend, it is very busy. There were so many people here. And that means that if you're going into these really tight, cramped stores, you might be bustling up against other people. And normally there's only one store attendant, so you might be waiting a while to speak to some people. This is also a very common sight. If you go into a store and you see pictures instead of the actual figures, that means one of two things. This store only sells pre-orders, so they change the pictures every now and then because they don't have the room in the store to have all that inventory. Cameo by Ryan. Or it means that they have it off-site, so you'll ask for something, then they'll go and get it from somewhere else and they'll bring it to you. Both ways are great for conserving space in those small stores because if they did have all the stock on hand in each store, then they would be more crowded than they already are and you wouldn't want that take my word for it. You can see outside this store there is a line. What did they sell? Mystery vinyl minis. They're also super popular in Hong Kong, just like Cos Babies. For us, maybe Cos Babies aren't a huge deal, but in Hong Kong, collector's space is limited. In their houses, in their apartments, they don't have the amount of real estate as we do, normally. Some people do have the room, but for the most part, Hong Kong-based collectors, they like to collect smaller scale things, so they can fit them in their collections and have more variety. That's why 112 scale works so well. There are multiple different lines, they're in the smaller scale, they're from multiple different companies, and there is a massive character selection. So if you're putting together a display, these can fit the bill. Although, speaking of the bill, they are a little bit more expensive in Hong Kong, because McFarlane figures, Black Series figures, 
they're imports, which means that you're not just paying for the figure, but you're also paying for how the figure got to this country in the first place. So there is a little bit, or sometimes a lot of a bit, of a markup. I'm so sorry. This store, one of my favourites, it's called Seven. They have 3-0 stuff, they're officially licensed to distribute a lot of this, by the way. They also have some Mazinga, they do have the More Storm model kits for Iron Man, and they've got one 6 scale. Not just 3-0 though, they do sell hot toys. They have Lego, they have 3-0 DLX figures, ZD toys, and they have some more interesting Kamen Rider stuff. There is a massive amount of variety in this one store. So if you're a 1-6 scale fan or a Transformers fan, I'm super shocked at the size of this freaking thing because it is enormous. The YOLO Park Optimus Prime is a monster. And it comes in at a massive monster price tag as well. So if you have the space for this darn thing and you have the funds available, I'm pretty sure it's in the neighborhood of over 2,000 USD, it's an option for you. On the inside of the store, more 3 zero hot toys, and also some YOLO Park model kits. They do have some obscure DID figures and a couple of third-party things here and there, but for the most part, it is officially licensed. If you're more interested in third-party stuff, don't worry, there are more stores coming up that do have a lot more third-party. Because in Hong Kong, it's like the figure capital of the world. Seriously, whatever you're looking for, chances are you can find it. These stores are open quite late, and they do start late as well. So if you come to Hong Kong and you're an early riser, don't be. Go back to bed, because chances are the store you're looking to go to isn't going to be open earlier than like 3pm. So if you want to go out and look at stuff like this, just wait. Later in the afternoon, everything is open. This was a super interesting store, because they had some official Hot Toys figures, some customs, some kit bashes, and they were just in plastic bags in a cabinet, and some of them looked really good. That Jackie Chan, for instance, I was tempted. But how did they get here? I mean, even that Hot Toys Predator, he's just in a plastic bag, no accessories. So if you want to do customs, or if you want to do kit bashes, you're looking for fodder, stores like this, even a DX12, could definitely be one that you want to visit when you come to Hong Kong. Inns Point was our first stop. So that was just a taste. That was the first stop. We've got, I think, two more centers just like that that we're going to right now. So the next one we're going to... Uh, it's called the CTMA Center, and it is the home of the original Hot Toys shop. The one before Secret Base existed. The original. The OG. Before we had Secret Base, before we had Rebel Base, before we had Echo Base, we had or toy it would have just been called Hot Toys at the time. It would have just been okay. So now it's called Toy Hunters. They still, uh, I think, owned and operated by Hot Toys, but they have sideshow stuff there. They have Prime One Studio stuff there, and this is basically the store that you go to when you want import stuff. If Ryan wants a sideshow animated Obi Wan yep. or Anakin, this is the store he has to go to. While we're on the way there, I just want to say that I am loving all of the tech that I bought for this trip. First off, the DJI mics on the street with all the background noise, and you can still hear Ryan and I. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. The DJI gimbal that I'm using, super stable, very easy to use, and the cinematic mode on the iPhone 14 Pro. Love it. So, a little bit of a tech shout out. Speaking of tech, while you're on the streets of Hong Kong, you're walking to CTMA Center or one of the other centers, there is a lot of tech around. So if you're in the market for potentially buying a new cell phone or something else, chances are you will be able to find it on the streets of Hong Kong. Now the first store we're going to isn't Toy Hunters. We will get to Toy Hunters, but it's on one of the upper levels. So let's start off down below in kind of like the basement. This store is a smaller one and it sells a variety of stuff. You've got premium formats, you've got some of those mini Iron Studio statues. You also have some Kota Bakia. A really solid mix of stuff here and they sell comics. So if you are looking for comics, CTMA Center, one floor down on your left after you exit the escalator, 
this store could potentially service that need for you. This is actually the only store in Hong Kong that I did see comics at, so maybe this is the shop that you have to go to if you're a local as well. They do have an old school sideshow snake pliskin, unfortunately the jacket was peeling, I had a look at it. And some Prime 1 stuff with the mini Starscream bust, plus some massive Pacific Rim statues. They're truly huge. Then, more import stuff. Import for Hong Kong. NECA. NECA, I didn't think would have a big market here, but there's everything ranging from Godzilla to King Kong to Chucky. Plus some old school McFarlane toys with the Assassin's Creed 2 pack there, I see you in the background. DC collectibles, and even a Mezco Justice League Batman. There is some long since sold out stuff here, and the prices on things were very, very reasonable. I would recommend coming to this store at least to take a look. Then down one more level, because there is another basement level. This one had a sign that caught my eye, and it said, Toy Mart. I thought, ooh, that sounds like something. That sounds like somewhere I want to be, because... Toy Mart? Heck yeah, like Toys R Us, I guess. No. There was no Toy Mart. I don't know what that sign is there for, but I couldn't find the magical land of Toy Mart. I don't know if there's some hidden Narnia door that I have to step through to get into it, but there was this store down the end of the corridor, and this store, oh my word, there was some really wacky stuff in here. There was also some really hard to find stuff. It was another store with a good amount of variety. I think that's what you have to do in Hong Kong. If you are selling figures, you have to be a bit more diverse. Because if you're just selling one thing, then chances are you're casting a very small net. You're not going to get a lot of collectors coming into your store. But if you can sell one twelfth all the way up to larger, like quarter scale, that's a bigger net. You'll catch more fish, aka more collectors, so to speak. I don't know where I'm going with this. Here's some custom Lego minifigures. Lego. A big thing, because they're a small thing. Small is sometimes better, I guess, when it comes to LEGO minifigures. There's even Kamen Rider, and I just spotted those Mighty Morphin Power Rangers minifigures. God damn it, I wish I'd picked them up. I love Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And I'm a fan of LEGO. Imagine a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers juice bar made out of LEGO. Now I'm thinking that would be an incredible mock. Alright, this is the store that you've potentially been waiting for. Toy Hunters, the first official Hot Toys store. On the inside, what do you know? Hot Toys. And they are for sale. You can take them off the shelf or ask for a brand new one. And the prices are super reasonable because they're direct from the source. No markup, no overseas companies adding their markup on top of them. You're paying Hot Toys the price they've been asking in Hong Kong because it's a local retail store. This back wall, my Word, these statues, some of them had crazy presents, like the new Prime 1 Jungle Hunter. This thing almost looked like half scale. I could not take my eyes off that statue. It was a beast. Then, like I said, with the lead up to this store, sideshow stuff, and 3-0, and Mezco, and Figuarts, and Mafex. This is basically an official distributor for a lot of those companies. So if you're looking for import stuff, big or small, you come to Toy Hunters. And once again, the prices were great. I got myself a 3-0 Torment Giant Spain from Game of Thrones for 112 Australian dollars. I don't usually talk about how much I spend on collectibles, but I wanted to mention that because it just kind of goes to show how much cheaper 1-6 scale figures can be in Hong Kong. That doesn't go for all figures, you're not always going to get crazy deals like that, but sometimes you can, and I get so much joy from shopping at these stores, because getting that figure that you've been looking for forever just off the shelf, brand new, for a really reasonable price, is the best thing ever. You all know that feeling. Then they had a couple more statues in the window. Queen Studios half-scale Aquaman, who looks the same size as that Jungle Hunter, by the way, and Infinity Studios Superman bust. This thing is beautiful. I was very, very tempted. Not to buy it here and put it in my suitcase, of course, but get it from a company locally. This Iron Spider statue, quite striking. Then, some more variety, whether it's 1-6 scale Hot Toys figures or DLX scale 3-0 figures, they're in the window outside the store. 
Sometimes they do have prototypes on display here, but not very often. So, this is a little bit awkward. We got all the B-roll that we could. We filmed as much of the store as they would allow because unfortunately, they did not allow us to film. So Ryan went in and asked. Uh, they told us to oh, You can't say it, it on camera. So uh, yeah, it was a no, but we did make a little bit of a purchase. Now onto the next place, which is the Sino Center. Secret base. Oh yes, secret base. There are a lot of figure stores at Sino Center where secret base is. So hopefully they let us film. Hopefully. We'll find out. If it wasn't super clear, we're not going to Secret Base in this video. There is a completely separate video for Secret Base. Go ahead and check that one out. But the best part about Sino Center, it's not just the home of Secret Base, there are other stores here. But it's a little bit interesting in the way it works. It kind of feels like an office building. So when you get here, check out the directory of stores and that should tell you where the store is located, which floor. You quite literally get in the elevator and exit on the floor that the store is. This store, Toys Beat, is actually TNS Figures, which is a really awesome online store selling a ton of third-party figures. I never actually knew that they had a physical location, but in Hong Kong, at Sino Center, they do. So chances are, if you spot something online on their site that you want, and you live in Hong Kong, or you're traveling to Hong Kong, Come to this store, they may have it, and then you might be able to see it before you buy, rather than just seeing pics online, and maybe the figure will look as good as it does in the pictures. Here, in person, you can see the darn thing, so it's a non-issue. They do have a massive selection of 1-6 scale figures. Not just Hot Toys, they have Lord of the Rings from Asmus, they've got 3-0 with the G.I. Joe figures, they've got Ultraman and third party in the mix. So that's why I love TNS figures and Toys B. Whenever I come back to Hong Kong, I'm gonna go right back to this store the first day right away, cause the variety, I've used that word so many times already, and I will probably use it a few more, is on point. The prices for things, especially older figures like some of those 3-0 Game of Thrones figures, very, very reasonable. Don't forget, Convert the currency. If you see a price in this video, put it into a currency converter. It's Hong Kong dollars to your currency. The massive open glass window showcasing the third party figures. And also the posing is pretty good. I've seen some very lackluster poses from some store displays, but not this one. This is some interesting stuff. A 112 scale godfather. I didn't know that was a thing. A 112 scale Punisher in that beautiful blue comic book style suit. A PUBG dude and some baby versions of Joker. Then right down the bottom, I'm pretty sure that's a Fison Egyptian god figure. Plus some video game figures. Alexios from Assassin's Creed and also Virgil from Devil May Cry. Win.C Bob Marley. Anyone with that awesome diorama display base for a stage. 110 scale Iron Studios, Spidey, Avengers, Batman, so many different options. I'm trying not to repeat myself and say the same thing over and over again, but it's kind of hard because we're also looking at the same stuff over and over again. A lot of these stores in Hong Kong, they do have different stuff, like the two-pack with the ninja, Bruce Wayne and Ra's al Ghul, Young Rich Toys version of Killmonger, and then a bunch of So-So Toys and SL Custom figures. But then they do have the mainstays, like the Iron Studios figures and also some of the official stuff. These were cool. 12 World? Never heard of them. If you're in the market for a 112 scale Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes, those are pretty cool. This was interesting. A box? of scarecrows, one six scale scarecrows in the full outfit with a body for 300 Hong Kong dollars, which turns out is around 38 US dollars at the time of filming this video, cause currency conversions, they do fluctuate. That's my one piece of advice. Find out the currency conversion rate and do the calculations before you buy at the time you're in Hong Kong. Because I didn't. I'd been to Hong Kong a couple of years ago and I thought, oh, I know the currency conversion rate. Nuh-uh, I didn't. I should have checked, but it turns out that I actually spent a little bit more on some figures than I thought I did. 
not a huge deal, still over the moon with my purchases, but that is some research that I would recommend doing. Just download a currency conversion app, or if you have an iPhone, go to the home screen, pull down on your screen and it'll bring up the search bar, type in 300 HKD and your phone is smart enough to know the country that you're from. So when you type in that price, it'll automatically convert the currency to your home country currency. That's something I learned out after I made my purchases at multiple different stores. What did I buy from this store? More 3-0 Game of Thrones figures. I'm on a massive Game of Thrones kick at the moment, and this store had some very hard to find figures. And they were the deluxe versions, and they were also for super reasonable prices. Yes, even factoring in the actual currency conversion. That was Sino Center, so a couple of stores. My favorite one's Toys Beat, which is TNS figures. And um, yeah, good variety of 1-6 scale, Iron Studios 10 scale, 12 scale, good variety all around. We're now on our way to our last stop for this video, which is Richmond Arcade. And it's one of my absolute favorites. What can we expect to see at Richmond Arcade? Mostly hot toys as well. You have your assorted random smaller scales of figures. And there's also a shop that sells like bodies, custom clothing kits head sculpts, stuff like that, so it should be a good arcade to shop for. And we did buy something from Toys Beat, which is TNS figures. We did buy a, a little custom kit, so we do need to find a body. So hopefully we can find the Fison body that we need at Richmond Arcade, and then we'll be able to assemble it and then review it another day. But anyway, going off on a tangent, let's go to Richmond Arcade. Oh, yeah. I also bought that custom Wolverine kit by Superduck, so I can make myself with a Fison body a Weapon X Wolverine with the harness and the helmet on. Stay tuned, I will review that when I'm done, but I actually forgot that I picked that up because I'm filming this voiceover after I'm already back in Australia. Richmond Arcade, to me, is the quintessential Hot Toys Hong Kong 1-6 scale shopping arcade. If you are coming to Hong Kong and you're trying to get some time for 1-6 scale figure hunting but you don't have a ton of it, skip the other centers. I mean, go and see Secret Base, of course you have to, but come right here after. Figure Station on the ground floor, they have so much awesome stuff. So much third party. If you're looking for bodies, this is the place to come to. If you're looking for head sculpts, this is also the place to come to. If you're looking for third party figures, you guessed it, you better come here. Or their store upstairs in the same center. They have two stores and they're both chock full of 1-6 scale goodness. If you go upstairs and that store is closed but you see something in the window, don't freak out. Come downstairs, speak to the lovely people at Figure Station. They will come up with you, they'll open this door, and then you can buy that thing. Now, I did manage to get a couple of things from this store that I never thought I'd be able to find. Some very, very old, hard-to-find figures, like those X-Men that you are seeing in that window. That Toys Era Cyclops I have been looking for forever. These guys had it. No problem, they had multiple different versions, and they let me check the pleather for flaking just to make sure there were no issues. Which, thank goodness, there weren't. Now, remember earlier when I said, don't come to these stores earlier in the day? Don't do that here either. This store, it opens quite late, after 3 or 4 p.m. But they do stay open late. So if, like me, you pick up a figure and then you open it up back at the hotel and the outfit isn't good or the head sculpt isn't great or the body isn't awesome, you can come right back here and pick up any of those things to upgrade your figures even late at night. Which is something I actually had to do. A story potentially for another day. They have these big displays of head sculpts, very reasonable prices, whether they're female head sculpts with rooted hair, or male head sculpts, or Iron Man helmets, or even a Hulk head sculpt. Why would you need that? I don't know, maybe someone's doing a custom figure and they need a Hulk head sculpt. That particular expression. Then for outfits, they range from the more obscure, like these Japanese schoolgirl outfits, if you're trying to put together a custom, or maybe a Sailor Moon, you could do some sort of kit bash. They're here. Neck connectors, hands, and so many head sculpts. Now for third party figures, they had some figures that had just released. So I guess 
they get stuff pretty quickly. I would definitely say that if you are in town and something has released that you're interested in, come here and have a look because chances are they'll have a spare one, they'll have it on display, you can check it out and then you can make your purchase if you want to. All sold out figures, there was a Premier Toys Mad Max that has sold out ages ago online but they had multiple in the store. They even had the Black Transcendent and the Black Wing by Art figures, the third party Zack Snyder's Justice League figures, Tactical Suit Batman and Black Suit Superman. I was tempted by so much stuff in this store, and thank goodness I had Ryan with me, because Ryan was like, Nah, uh Justin, where are you going to put that? Think about your display. Where are you going to put a Patrick Bateman by Present Toys? And my answer was, I don't really know, but I do want it. I didn't end up getting it, and I'm really thankful to Ryan for helping me out, not only to film this video, but also to ask all the stores if we can film, because... Thank goodness Ryan speaks the language. I don't. So I was a fish out of water. But Ryan was able to come in, ask the stores if we could do a little bit of filming just to showcase what they have. And thankfully, because Ryan's the best ever, they said, yes, absolutely. You can film not just our store downstairs, but this one as well, the upstairs store. This one, I actually might prefer to the downstairs store. I'm a huge fan of the custom bodies and the outfit sets and everything like that. I've said as much. This store, however, this is where you find the long sold out stuff because normally it's closed. They are run on a skeleton staff, which means their staff members, they can't be in two places at once. They're either at the downstairs store or the upstairs one. And when people are entering the mall, if you think about it logically, they enter at the lower level first. So if you want to capture the foot traffic, that is the store to do that with. And chances are some people might not even go upstairs. I would recommend it. Just go upstairs. It's not just this store as well. They have other stores in the center that also sell 1-6 scale stuff. There is one store in particular that also sells Hot Toys figures. And they have some massive diorama displays that looks beautiful. But when we went... They were closed. Unfortunately, in Hong Kong, they were hit hard by the COVID pandemic. And they had a zero COVID policy, which means that a lot of stores, they closed and they went out of business. So they're no longer open, which is a darn shame. So a lot of the stores that I had seen previously that I was super excited to film, they no longer existed. And that was heartbreaking. So when you come to Hong Kong, support these local stores. They really do need the help sometimes because they don't get a ton of foot traffic or they haven't over the past few years. It is starting to pick up though. As you saw at some of the earlier centers, they were bustling. We did film this a little bit later in the week and it was a little bit quieter because it wasn't quite the weekend yet. So that's why you're not seeing as many people. This store, this is the destination for Hot Toys at Richmond Arcade. It's called Love Toys. Yes, it's called Love Toys. If you tell someone you're going to a store that's called Love Toys, they may not think that you're buying the type of toys that you intend to. One six scale figures. They might think you're buying something else. And if you back it up with, no, 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 I'm buying Hot Toys from Love Toys. They may give you an increasingly awkward look, because Hot Toys also sounds like the other type of toys. I'm off on a tangent, they have a lot of Hot Toys here, also brand new stuff, and they are stacked to the brim with figures. Their prices, quite reasonable. The older something is though, the more expensive it can be. And also the newer something is, the more expensive it can be. So if you find something somewhere in the middle, that's the best place to be for Hot Toys because those, those are the bargains. If you do want to spend a little bit more, you absolutely can. I just saw an Avengers 1 Hulk, who for a lot of people is the definitive Hulk. So that was Love Toys. Now that was the upper part of the arcade, the basement level, ooh. This is where the fun begins. Third party stuff, 1-6 scale bodies again, head sculpts, outfit sets. This store is the shit. It's called the Century Hobbies Toy Shop. You'll see it as soon as you walk downstairs, you open the door. It looks like a hot mess. 
and that's because it is. I mean that, however, in the best way possible. Genuinely, I do. There is so much stuff here that they couldn't possibly organize it neatly, so they didn't bother. They've stacked everything to the ceiling. Third party, hot toys, just random bodies that have been ripped out of figures just popped here that you can buy, also brand new bodies. Outfit sets, accessories, coats, jackets, pants, guns. If you're looking for 1-6 scale weapons, you can find them here. Even bits and pieces from the Mark 50 accessory set. So if you want that Thanos gauntlet restraint but nothing else from the accessory set, surprise, surprise, you can find it here. Surprises are the best, aren't they? To spot the surprises, though, you may need to come back a couple of times because... This is visual overload. Now that you're watching the video, you can pause stuff and dissect it, but in person with the hustle and bustle and trying to get in and out of these stores with so many people around you and seeing all of this stuff, this big wall of figures, it can be hard to concentrate and spot things that potentially you may want to purchase. So you may miss things. Come back to these stores a couple of times. Come earlier in the week so it's not as busy as it is on the weekend. Because if you do just come on the weekend and you're rushing through these stores, you may miss something. And chances are, you will. Like that Darth Toys Master Roshi set. I am, now that I see it, curious what that looks like. And I may pick it up because I'm a massive Dragon Ball fan. I didn't expect this video to reveal things that I missed in person while I was in Hong Kong, but... Yeah, it has. So all of that stuff I just said about visual overload, it is the truth. This wall of weapons, look at that supreme gun with the cash, the little cash shooting gun. The V for Vendetta mask, the old school 80s cell phone, and some little bits and pieces with books and patches and batarangs, and stickers that you can pop on your figure's jackets. This wall of head sculpts, very impressive. I bought a couple of head sculpts myself. Which ones did I buy? Feel free to pause it, but it's the long-haired Samurai Tom Cruise for the last Samurai. And the Battle Damage Tom Cruise head sculpt. You'll have to rewind to go and check out the ones I'm talking about, or stay tuned to the channel, because I will review them. Then this was the other end of the store. They had pictures on the walls for things you can pre-order that aren't physically here in the store. And I wouldn't be surprised if they had a separate section outside the store with more stock. Like this. This was the hallway of the arcade. It's chock full of Hot Toys figures. How do they get there though? Does someone come in in the morning, or sorry, in the afternoon, open up the glass doors, then just drag boxes and boxes and boxes of Hot Toys out into the hallway, then go, yep, that's it. That's my display. The boxes, they're exactly where they need to be. Even in the fire escape stairwells, they had some in-art jokers. Yeah, just sitting there, I guess waiting for some buyers to go ahead and pick them up. There were quite a few of them too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're at the end of this video. It's been a bunch of fun doing figure shopping with Ryan. Hopefully I get to do this more often. I love spending time in Hong Kong, it's fantastic. Oh, look at the merch. It's been an honor shopping with you, sir. Thank you for showing me all the local haunts. No problem, it was a pleasure. We will do it again in the future, but that's about it for this video. Let us know what was your favorite store, but like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next video.